Next up, you know him for, for his iconic role as Bobby Ewing on the long-running show Dallas, my favorite. And you know her. Thank you, Front Row. You know her. You know her from her roles uh, on Happy Days, Matlock, The Office, as well as countless TV movies, and she was a Broadway star. A few years ago, remember this during the pandemic, Patrick Duffy and Linda Pearl found love together later in life. You know, uh, Patrick lost his longtime uh, wife, uh, beloved wife, I believe to cancer. Well, now Linda is touring the country singing, and she's hitting up a fabulous legendary venue here in the Twin Cities called Crooners. Well, yeah, Crooners is great. If you come to visit us, our own Aaron Schwab performs there. Well, yes, yeah. Well, y'all know I love Dallas, so I had the pleasure of talking to them both while they were in separate locations. Watch. Well, Linda, I will start with you, uh, ladies first, and the uh, okay. leading lady. Uh, we're really excited to have you at Crooners, and mm -hmm. I know this. I know this show is kind of going through a portion of the American Songbook. Do I have that right? Is that a, a good description of the show? Yes, it's very good. Yeah, yeah, great. Mm -hmm. That's it. Great American Songbook. That's pretty much sort of my wheelhouse. And Ted Firth, my music director, who will be there, who's been to Crooners a lot. Uh, it's I know sort of, Ted. I saw you guys on an interview with another. I'm like, oh, I've seen Ted before. Uh, yeah, he's he's just he's really in a league all by his lonely self. He's just uh, great. So yeah, I met Ted. I'd actually been working with a, a, a different music director who sort of raised me in the world of cabaret. He'd been my guy for twenty odd years, and uh, but by his own admission, he was more sort of Broadway show tune thing, and I always wanted to lean towards jazz and. So then I was offered some gig in New York about 16 years ago, and they said, but you have to work with our music director, Ted. And I thought, well, that, I was all grumpy, but I was greedy. I wanted the job, so I said, okay. And I came into that first day, and here was this young kid. And um, I thought, I just, this was really going to hell in a handbasket, you know, in a hurry. And then he put his hands on the keys, and... I uh, almost get teary thinking about it because my life changed. I wanted to ask you, because uh, watching other interviews and just watching you, mm. this being another act in your life, another act in your career, you seem, I'm going to use the word, it's overused, but joyful. Are, no. you, just, are you just having the, because you look like you're having the most <laughs> fun. Yes, thank you for that. Well, there are a few reasons. True. Yeah. Uh, several reasons. Uh, I would say the primary reason is the other guy on this interview who will come to shortly, Patrick. And, uh, you know, but yeah, that's I mean, that just informs every aspect of life. Astonishingly, you know, I mean, it's like what this gets to be this chapter of life. So but also to, to be involved literally with harmony, especially when the world is so, you know, there are challenges everywhere you look, every newspaper you read, there, there are challenges and the music. OK, so this is very name droppy, but go ahead. This was <laughs> years ago and, and Rosemary Clooney was a was a friend and something of a mentor to me. And I was having sort of a, you know, just a one of those challenging chapters in my life and I was over at her house but I th I thought I had my game face on and I walked past her and she grabbed my hand and she looked through me and she said keep singing baby the music will never let you down and I it was sort of a life postcard I I mean I heard her of course I remembered it but I knew that there was a lot behind that and through the decades when you know, when another life hurdle comes, I hear that wisdom. It's like, oh, that's what she meant. Well, Patrick, <laughs> let me let me bring you in by piggybacking off that. What is what is it like for you to see the person that you love so joyful doing her thing? Aw. Well, that, boy, that's a loaded question because, I, <laughs> uh, uh, and it's not loaded because I don't have an answer. It's loaded by which answer should I pull out of the many that I have of I've, Linda and I've been together now almost four years. It'll be four years in June. I would say every time I see her, well, our personal life aside, every time I see her perform, whether it's on screen, in a play or singing, uh, it's a tutorial 
not just on the craft of what she's doing, but on why you do it in the first place. Mm. And she is such a, a, a an acolyte of the religion of art, no matter what it is. If she's singing, if she's acting, if she's uh, painting, she's a prodigious and a beautiful painter. Um, but everything comes from this serious devotion to the, uh, the the ability of art to change the world and it, and I see it in her on a regular basis every time she sings um, every time she's singing in the house to prepare for a show um, I, I hear <laughs> do that a I, lot. Hear them, I hear those songs a lot I must tell you I hear them a lot. <laughs> And I now know them. If, if she ever gets sick, I can go on. I'm oh, yeah. Patrick this. can go on. He's... Get up there, Patrick. Put the dress Patrick. on, the high heels. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's go. Uh, uh, <laughs> they're, no less, they're no less inspiring, uh, you know, echoing through the house than they are when she's on stage and performing. Um, so that's my joy. My joy is to watch her work at what she does. And art is what she does best. Great couple. Great couple. So she's traveling around uh, the country. So wherever you're watching us from, check her website. If you're in the Twin Cities, you can see Linda perform uh, Saturday, April 6th. Like I said, at Crooners, tickets are available at CroonersMN.com. Now, here's the deal. You're going to love this if you like behind the scenes dishy stories. I had the pleasure of chatting with them for more than 20 minutes. And you know, you know. I had to ask Patrick some Dallas questions. Uh, I got real nerdy, but by doing that, I got a great old style Hollywood behind the scenes story when we come back. Back in a moment, back in a moment. Welcome back. During my uh, glorious 20 plus minute conversation with Patrick Duffy and Linda Pearl, you know, if you watch the show, you know, the show Dallas means the world to me. Uh, Patrick was more than willing. He was so nice to indulge my questions. Now, before I get into this, I want to give you even more back story so you can enjoy this. If, if you don't watch Dallas in 1984, the character of Miss Ellie was recast from the legend Barbara Bel Geddes to TV icon Donna Reed. Y'all know Donna Reed. Donna was a much different Miss Ellie. Nobody really liked her. Uh, she made Miss Ellie very fancy. Barbara left the show because she had heart problems. Well, Patrick shares a story about um, the great Barbara Bel Geddes that you have to hear. Listen, when you think of your time, when you think of the original and then the three years of the reboot, what's the what's the first thought that bubbles up to the pool? What's the first, what do you think of immediately? Hagman. Larry Hagman. Um, uh, we did the table reading of Dallas in, my God, 1978, I guess. Uh, and uh, I walked into Warner Brothers uh, little conference room. Larry and I shook hands and he became my best friend at that instant. And he was my best friend for the 40 plus years and I was at his bedside when he died. Um, so he actually just permeates that entire section of my life of the joy of working, uh, the joy of friendship, the joy of, 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 of being mentored without him trying to mentor me. I saw a man, uh, like you've mentioned a couple of times already, whose joy of working was unrivaled. His joy of encountering any individual was unrivaled and that, and that was a life lesson for me uh, and a joyful thing to participate in with him with my best friend linda in in your in all of your happy days in matlock and did you ever run into mr hagman did you did you know larry at all <clears throat> i did i i didn't know him but i yeah i mean it's cur and i'm grateful i mean it was fun but i'm especially grateful now that patrick and i are together that i did i had dinner with him twice and was at his home for a fundraiser once. And so, I mean, you know, on the on the farthest periphery of his life, but um, anyway, I, I did have to have, I did get to have those couple of, you know, brief encounters. And, and I did a movie with Linda Gray, who I just adored. Um, so <clears throat> yeah, I'm grateful for that uh, because it's, it's just a, a little bit, you know, I've, I've had sort of a, 
a waft of Larry and, and a little bit more of Linda in my life. So <laughs> Obviously, the show recast Miss Ellie in 84 with the great Donna Reed. Exactly. Uh, some will say whatever the result was. Some people liked it. Some people don't. Question for you. I've interviewed you a couple times. Always wanted to ask you. Do you think that they should have recast Pam after Victoria left? That's a that's a very interesting question. And I, I think no. I really think no. I think, um, and, and I even questioned uh, uh, Miss Ellie being recast. Uh, but that was Barbara's choice. Barbara chose to leave the show. And, you know, and the cast was based around pleasing Miss Ellie. She was the matriarch of the family. We had to have a Miss Ellie. So with Pamela, uh, you know, the Pamela Bobby relationship was truly uh, it was written to emulate the the romeo and juliet the capulets and the montagues um, and you couldn't marriage. replace that character with another person being that character that's why they tried once she was gone to have bobby have relationships with other iconic females he did he obviously didn't just play around he you know that's why we had a priscilla presley you know come in and, and to play jenna wade and finally uh sheree wilson to play to play april um but recasting Pamela would have been um, unthinkable, as would recasting Bobby, in my opinion, or recasting Jr. There was a there's a tight group of original cast members that had to be sacred, and and quite honestly, you know, because they're both gone now, and it's really not a, a story that should be kept secret. When Barbara saw Donna playing Miss Ellie, I've heard this story. She said, "Oh no." That's not Miss Ellie. And she called Lorimar and said, I'm coming home. And they had <laughs> to with That's the true, Patrick. I always heard that as a rumor. That's true. No, it's true. It's true. Barbara saw her character that she had invested in, you know, as a great American actress for all those years. And she thought, no, that no. She felt a responsibility to Miss Ellie. And she notified, uh, I don't think she asked, she notified mm -hmm. Lorimar. That I'm, I'm coming home, and then Laura, poor Lorimar and poor Donna, who everybody exactly. loved. How can you, you not guessing, love Donna yeah. Reed? But they Stop had to guessing. then, you know, get rid of her playing Miss Ellie. And oh literally, God. within a one-year period, Barbara walked out the door. Miss Ellie came in as Donna Reed. Donna Reed walked out to the kitchen, and in the <laughs> oh and, my God! And the Ewing boys just kept saying. Hello, Mama. Hello, Mama. <laughs> True story. <laughs> Miss Ellie was always a very earthy character about the land. She didn't care about business. Bar uh, Donna Reed saw Miss Ellie, uh, rightfully so, as like a Dallas socialite. Uh, Donna knew Texas wives, and that's a, just a different type of character. Sadly, but this is how Hollywood is, Donna was told she was fired as she was getting off a plane by the National Enquirer. Uh, and then sadly, she died shortly after that. Uh, she was fired from Dallas, and I believe she died about four or five months later. But as Patrick said, Barbara Bel Geddes came back in the role of Miss Ellie and was there almost till the end in 1990. After all the TV shows, movies, and singing both Linda uh, have done, you may be surprised uh, what they want their legacy to be. What is it? You'll find out next. Stay with us, everybody. <laughs> Glad you're here. Old Hollywood Day. Well, besides singing, acting, and attending fan conventions, Patrick Duffy and Linda Pearl started a business together a few years ago. I love this. Sourdough. You know how we all made sourdough in the pandemic? And it's called Duffy Dough. And I talked to them about, I, I know, out of all the things, I was so fascinated by this. I, I asked them how it got started and why they say they want it to be part of their legacy. Watch this. Let's talk about a different type of art, and that's baking. Um, I was asking, I brought this up to you. I, my friend was with me, Linda. I saw Patrick a few weeks ago at the Hollywood show. and Oh, great. Obviously, obviously she knew I was going to bring up Dallas because I was going to save this to last to make you laugh, Patrick. But you're in my office right oh. here. <laughs> that is great. You're in Good my office. You're in my studio. This was my COVID studio. I did the talk show from here all during COVID. Anyway, 
Wow. But I told her, I said, well, I'm, I'm obviously going to ask about Dallas, but I love that damn Duffy Doe. How did that idea come? Well, originally it came because my parents uh, were gifted, that my mother specifically was gifted that sourdough starter in Alaska in 1952. And it's been in our family ever since. I, I grew up not knowing anything about it, but I I grew up eating sourdough pancakes, sourdough rolls, et cetera. Um, then when my sister graduated from high school and started college, my mother gave her a, a starter based on that starter. Uh, again, I knew nothing about it, but my sister would cook for me because I was an, an idiot child who didn't know when or how to eat. Uh, I was a good drinker in college, but not a good eater. <laughs> my, sister, my sister would deliver, you know, the bread and the rolls, et cetera. And eventually um, I, I got to where I started to want to do it myself. So she give she gave me the starter. Well, fast forward from college to three years ago, uh, wanting desperately to impress Linda. Um, I took that starter and, and tried my best to show her how adept I was in the kitchen. And at one point, um, I'm not sure it was me or, uh, or Linda. She says it was me, but I said something. It was said, this would make a good little business to do this. Well, uh, that's the end of my business capabilities. Linda <laughs> then took that concept. And she. we were on tour in London, in England, for seven months. And during the tour, besides working, besides arranging the the B and Bs every week as we changed our location, she developed Duffy's Dough as an industry, as a as a product, from the packaging to the advertising to uh, designing the the logos, everything. Uh, so she is really the heart and soul of Duffy's Dough. But what we were able to do, and make this as brief as possible, is we are so fortunate both Linda and myself in the, the trajectory and the sustainability of our careers, that this now is, is a time in our life when we're figuring out, you know, really what do you want to be remembered by? You know, Linda's done 50 TV movies and I've had a couple of television shows. Is that really what it's about or is it something more profound as to posh a word, but just more significant? And mm. what we decided is if we can do this business, and donate 100% of the profits to charities, to food-based charities, to uh, hunger uh, in this country specifically, then that's something that if we can maintain Duffy's Dough as a, as a business, that's what we'd be most proud of. Very nice. It's really good, too. It's good. To learn more about uh, Duffy's Dough, head to Duffy'sDough.com. Now, there's one more. I was telling the studio audience, there's one more moment that happened uh, before Linda joined the Zoom. We'll show you that later in the week. Uh, just trust me, I nerded out big time. Uh, <laughs> pretty embarrassingly so. After the break, that Midwestern mom is in our studio. We return back in a moment. Thanks, Patrick. Thanks, Linda.